The knee is one of the most complex joints in the body. This is the anterior or the front view of the knee. The knee is made up of four main bones. The femur, the tibia, the fibula, and the patella. The knee joint capsule is a thick, ligamentous structure that surrounds the knee joint. The capsule can contain fluid that may cause painful swelling of the knee joint. If you open the joint capsule, you will find the articular cartilage of the femur and the articular cartilage of the patella. The cartilage within the knee joint allows for smooth movement between the femur, tibia, and the patella. Here you can see the femoral condyles, the meniscus, the anterior cruciate ligament, the posterior cruciate ligament, the lateral collateral ligament, and the medial collateral ligament. The knee is a hinge joint that allows for flexion and extension of the knee. In front of the knee, the quadricep muscle is attached to the patella. The patellar tendon arises from the patella and inserts into the proximal tibia. The hamstring muscles are shown here at the back of the knee. Several bursa are seen around the knee. These include the suprapatellar bursa, the prepatellar bursa, the infrapatellar bursa, and the pes anserine bursa. These bursa allow the kneecap to slide freely underneath the skin while bending and straightening the knee. The area of depression located at the back of the knee joint is called the popliteal fossa. This is a posterior view of the knee. These are the bones from the back. Here you can see the posterior cruciate ligament. These are the muscles of the posterior knee. There are several muscles in a unique and interesting arrangement that is complex and difficult to memorize. The popliteal fossa is seen here at the back of the knee. There are neurovascular bundles within the fossa. You can see the popliteal artery and vein, tibial nerve, and common peroneal nerve. Both the tibial and common peroneal nerves arise from the sciatic nerve. Here you can see a diagram of the sciatic nerve and its branches. As you can see, the popliteal fossa is a closely packed space. The popliteal fossa is bounded by the biceps femoris laterally, as well as the semitendinosus and semimembranosus medially. The lower part of the space is formed by the two heads of the gastrocnemius muscle. On the medial side of the knee, you can find the arrangements of the tendons that insert into the tibia. Here you can see the medial collateral ligament. On the lateral side of the knee, you can see the biceps femoris tendon and the illotibial band. You can also see the lateral collateral ligament. The articular cartilage of the knee is different from the meniscus.
The articular cartilage gets worn out by aging and wear and tear. This condition is called degenerative arthritis. The hyaline cartilage or the crystal clear hyaline cartilage becomes roughened and bumpy. And here you can see a picture of arthritis from loss of hyaline cartilage. Here are some common injuries that occur around the knee. The quadricep tendon, the patellar tendon, and the patella cause active extension of the leg. Any disruption in these three structures will cause the patient to be unable to actively extend the knee. In an anterior cruciate ligament injury, the tibia moves forward. In a posterior cruciate ligament injury, the tibia moves backward. Rupture of the collateral ligament of the knee, lateral or medial, will cause abnormal side movement of the leg. Inside the knee, between the femur and the tibia, you will find the cushions or the meniscus. Here you can see the medial and the lateral meniscus. Here you can see the area of the meniscus which lacks blood supply. The blood flow is located within the peripheral portion of the meniscus. Healing of a repaired meniscus is good if the tear is at the periphery because of good blood supply. Here are two examples of meniscal tears. This video is for educational purposes only. Please consult your doctor before you make any decision about your medical care.